TVC News, Abuja. And let's tell you that several groups and individuals are now setting agenda for the incoming administration um, of the president-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Um, they believe that areas where the uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu should, should focus on, the, his administration should focus on. For some, it should be security. For others, um, economy. And um, some say, look, he should focus on uniting the country. But to speak to all of this, let's talk to the National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, Phyllis Mocha. He joins us um, here in our studio. Good to have you join us. Thank you so much for having me. So I'm sure that you've been listening to um, this very con many conversation in the country as to where uh, people believe that this administration should focus on the priority areas. Uh, but in, in the run-up to the presidential election, there were several issues. Um, just few, maybe two years before the election, we had issues around um, agitation of marginalization. People saying, look, we, we want to be recognized and also benefit from, you know, as, as we call it, national cake. Um, there were those who, were t who we had the um, ASU strike almost for one year um, before that election. And then before we moved to diffuse scarcity and the narrowity, which we are still dealing with today. And um, the for the next administration, for the incoming administration, what is the priority area for, for them? Uh, thank you so much. And now, uh, there's a whole lot on the plate mm. for the incoming president, mm. um, Asiwaji Bola Metinubu. Um, the country has been um, treated with both you know, false and truthful narratives about where we are. Fact is that we're not as bad. Things are not as bad as they you know, appear to be, or as they made out to be, especially by those who have you know, clear political uh, interests. But there's no question that one of the key areas of priority for this government uh, from the day of you know, its inauguration is to really bring the country together, is to have the country take a deep breath, uh, to you know, push that reset button, to begin to get Nigerians to understand that this is the country and that this is their only country. There's no alternative country for all of us. And that we all are uh, you know, called upon by virtue of our citizenship to lend support and lend, you know, some level of, you know, patriotic zeal, you know, to the new government for this country to succeed. If the country succeeds, we all succeed in our private lives, in our businesses, in whatever it is we do. If the country fails, we all fail together. And it's not just the responsibility of those, you know, who govern. It is our collective responsibility. So I think that the first duty that the you know, incoming president bears is to really reassure Nigerians that you know, he is here to listen and to use all of the instruments of state to begin to lay out frame by frame all of these challenges that we face you know, as a country. Mm. Uh, the first thing is, first, you know, arising from this election, is to, I think, begin to bring all of the key political actors Together. And I want, I want you know, to stay in, there because yes. I don't want to lose this point you, you're about to make. And because um, I, I think this, is a, this election, many would say, is unprecedented. Um, it's the first time, perhaps, that we're having the three major tribes, as we'll call them um, in, in the country, as front, front liners, as the major contenders. We saw every, every tribe. Um, we saw Igbo, we saw Yoruba, we saw uh, um, the, 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 uh, the, some parts, the, the northerners as well, as major contenders. And some say, look, Perhaps that is the reason why we saw all of that, um, not division, but, you know, people really being bipartisan, as, uh, being partisan rather, more than ever before. So what would this administration, what would uh, uh, the president-elect, when he comes into office, what would he do to ensure, first of all, um, that it, the nation is united and seen to be united? You know, first of all, I think, you know, our president-elect has started off a wonderful note. Every comment is made from the day he accepted his election as you know, president-elect, he has you know, spoken in a way that recognizes the fragility of the moment mm. that we're in. He's sent a lot of you know, uh, telegraphs, if you will, to the opposition, those who ran with him or you know, ran against him in the election, that he is you know, president for all of us, not just the president for those who support him or president of those who elected him, but president for every Nigerian. Yes, this election, as you, you know, rightly mentioned, is one that's been flavored by you know, immense ethnic, religious you know, I mean, dichotomies. Mm. But 
This president-elect recognizes that, and he's a shrewd manager of you know, diversity. And I think that you know, we will see. And you know, one thing I must will say that, is that... Will that, that reflect yes. in, his, in, in his appointment? Because oh, that's one I, of the I, issues I, I believe so. people have to do. I believe so. You know, when he was governor of Lagos State, this was the only government around this country to today where you have people from other states, from other religious faiths in his government. They were appointed and they served diligently and were given the free hand to run you know, the assignments. So this president-elect will shock so many who do not today think that he is the you know, better candidate to emerge from this election. He will shock them. And the good thing about it is that the expectations of, of, on the part of those who don't support him are actually quite low. That's a good thing. Of course, those of us who are involved and who support him, who you know, help to elect him, have very high expectations. And we're going to hold him to that standard. But for many who didn't, you know, they have very low expectations. But that's good for any coming president because he's going to shock the living daylights out of them by the kind of very coherent, you know, inclusive you know, governance that is about to you know, announce. Uh, the moment is not great. Every time you so mention, every time you actually, mention yes. shock, yes. my mind my mind goes to <laughs> goes to um, electric shock, and then I remember, look, we don't even no, have light. Not, not that kind of shock. We don't have power in the first place. Yes. Perhaps not that kind of shock. Um, the good that, shock. All right, the good but one. The one no that power, makes and there is even no yes. power at the moment. I mean, it's not as consistent. Correct. I mean, in terms of um, um, power generation in the country today, for people to even you know in that sense at all to be shocked. What is he going to do um, in terms of power generation? It's, in, Nigerians have said, look, if we have a president that fixes that, you would have done perhaps you know, the greatest thing for If anybody is going to fix power, it would be Asiwa Jibola Metinobu. Because don't forget, in Lagos, he was one of the pioneers of the whole you know, concept of independent you know, power uh, provisioning. He did that in Lagos. And you know, he is someone who is restless. I've been around him. I said, when I speak, people think because I'm National Public Secretary, I'm saying these things. No, I'm not saying these things. I say it because, you know, I've been around him. And I know how restless he is to, you know, get, just raise his right hand and get sworn in. To begin to tackle these problems. He has come to this, you know, day from a distance, from a long distance. He understands. He gets it. And there's nothing as good and as, you know, I mean, hopeful as a president-elect or a president who gets it. Because part of the problem we have is that there's, you know, often disconnect between those who are elected to office and they get in and they begin to ask, what do we do now? And see what Ibala Mentinibu has given a long and hard thought. If you look at the manifesto of the party and his manifesto, he laid it out. And there's no expert anywhere who has come out to say, you know, to raise any serious queries about the vision that he has, you know, put forward that will guide, you know, the step-by-step, -step, you know, action of this new government to taking us it will be a tough road. I'm not making this sound like it's Uhuru, but it will be a tough road. But we have someone in Asorok who is going to wake up in the morning, go to bed at night with Nigeria on his mind, and to do everything that is possible, you know, within this rest of state to lay um, us, you know, in the right direction. I, I like your optimism, future. and I'm yes. sure that there, there are many Nigerians who are optimistic. Those who have worked with him who are opt optimistic as you are, but Nigerians are waiting to see what. Um, sure. This administration will unfold. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, the you. National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressives Congress.